man what is going on youtube family it's been a minute since y'all seen inside 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 of your boys integra and uh we ain't just you know sort of kicked it in a minute so that's what we about to do right now so how's life i hope everything is treating y'all well i'm doing fine i took a bit of a break from long form content and did quite a bit with uh youtube shorts so just been tapping into the short side of things and still want to do some long form content but you know it's a little bit more sparing than it used to be but yeah man just gonna really take out the uh take out the old integra and talk about some things that if you own one or if you um plan on owning one things to look out for as well as uh things that will probably go wrong just based on my year and a half of uh ownership experience so uh first thing that aggravated me with this car when i first got it um which didn't lend itself to feeling confident about the quality was the fact that uh my head-up display bezel never has fitted properly to the dashboard so that's been one thing that has always kind of like who the hell let this out the factory like this you know what i mean like how did you how so that's one thing it like i said it never has fit properly and it probably never will because I don't care that much. But again, when you buy it, this is my first Acura. So you hear about impressions of quality, 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 and fit and finish. And then that happens and you're like, uh, I don't know. So that's number one. Number two, I don't know if anybody else has experienced this issue or not. But like I told you guys before, I did have um, pretty major suspension overhaul done at around I want to say 3,500 miles on the car which again I was like uh, who the fuck let this out the factory like this um, and if you guys remember or if you watched any of my previous long long uh, form videos you'll know that the I believe it was the driver's side that started at first or the passenger side and then it creaked over to the to the opposite side and then the whole front end just started rattling when you went over the tiniest of bumps or made any sort of turn all of that was fixed through warranty i didn't have any out-of-pocket cost the cost for everything to be done was about around fourteen hundred dollars if it were out of warranty or if this were a, a uh, you know consumer caused issue like if i did something to damage the car and avoided the warranty that's how much i would have had to pay out of pocket um so pretty expensive job for something that's brand new just came out the factory so that was a little bit of a again another you know kind of wet rag on your confidence on longevity and things like that got that fixed have not had any issues with the suspension anymore no issues no noises no creaking no rattling no none of that so no issues there very happy very pleased with that um another thing that will happen to your integra 100 percent is going to happen the cover for the cargo area that is at some point going to snap off its piece inside of the body of the back of the trunk and then it's just going to flop around so it's not going to actually hold anymore um that has happened to cars that have came just straight off the truck and it's also recently happened to mine so mine i was like why the hell is that thing moving so much and it's because it's not stuck into the wall of the trunk anymore which is just again ridiculous and you running up behind me dumb don't see that i'm stopped completely to a stop and you already squinting while you I mean, so clearly you can't see you might want to slow that piece of shit down anyway so yeah so that's gonna happen what else is gonna happen if you do any power adders or any sort of modifications to the intake or anything like that 
even if it says it doesn't need a tune, get a tune because if you guys remember, I got my PRL high volume intake put on, went to red line and shot every single light that could possibly come on this dashboard. It came on. It was it freaked me out. I didn't know what the hell was going on. I thought I ruined the car. None of that. The car is fine. But you will need to get it tuned if you want it to be fine indefinitely. Um, and I think my car's ECU has just learned over time that the extra airflow is intentional because I've sent it to Redline and I still haven't gotten tuned and it hasn't given me any, any additional issues or lights or codes or anything. So I think the car just had to get used to the idea of having that extra air. Um, but now that it's used to it, I haven't had any more codes. And like I said, it's not tuned. So it's still possible that it could happen, but it hasn't. So that might just be a learning curve with the cars, um, electronics, things like that. Another thing that's going to happen to your Integra and it's going to aggravate the hell out of you because it definitely aggravates the hell out of me. You will sometimes have to randomly restart the entire car for the system to reboot because sometimes your Apple CarPlay I don't know if it happens with Android as much but Apple CarPlay loves to get stuck on these systems it just gets stuck and then it'll do stupid stuff like in the half screen you can see your map but when you go to click on the map itself it's completely black like won't show you any directions won't show you anything um, sometimes it has a problem recognizing the phone You'll get in and it'll show like an Apple CarPlay signal at the top or symbol uh, to let you know that it's trying to connect and it'll just give up and say no device found. It's just like, come on now. So that's another thing. The CarPlay in this car is a little iffy sometimes, but when it's working well, it is working well. But again, it's just not consistent. So definitely wish it was a little bit more consistent with respect to that um other than that anything else that aggravates me you guys know how i feel about the rear seat vents i'm never gonna i'm never gonna let that go accurate never gonna live that down so we ain't even gotta talk too long on that uh let's see here i do wish i had a panel roof and power folded mirrors that would be nice other than that it's been a great car. Fuel mileage is awesome. Gets excellent gas mileage. No complaints there. Um, handles very well. Rides well. If you're not used to a sportier, sort of stiffer chassis, really, then you may not be used to the way that the car rides. But to me, having several different Hondas and plenty of Civics in those Hondas. Um, this does ride like a luxurious Civic, you know? And I'm good with that, I like that. Softens it up just enough, but still got enough feel and feedback for you to know what's going on. So, let's turn on to this back road and let this thing rip. noises It's top tier. 
top tier. So. If you are still looking, haven't decided, you know, still not really sure what you want to spend about 40 grand on, um, this is still a great option and they're pretty much not being marked up anywhere. I don't, I don't think you're going to find yourself with some ridiculous discount on one of these. I really doubt it, but um, you're probably not going to have to pay anything over sticker for sure. So factor that in with some decent financing or nice lease you got yourself a pretty affordable vehicle that's going to have all the practicality all the space you know as much fun as you can can possibly have on a public road you know without hurting yourself or somebody else this thing is this thing is really great so no complaints on the drivetrain i of course you know Anybody that knows these L15 motors, they have a tendency to have head gasket issues or um, other just little stupid stuff about them um, that can cause complete engine failure if you don't stay on top of it or if you're not paying attention. So, of course, that's in the back of my mind sometimes too, but for the most part, I mean, honestly, this is the longest I've ever kept one single brand new car. So, I mean, if she just start acting up, I'm going to replace her. Erase, replace, you know what I'm saying? We're going to keep it moving, but for now, seems like it's doing just fine to me. So, But, again, at a moment's notice, if it starts to piss me off with anything major... It's out the door. I don't, I don't have the patience for that type of shit, especially on a, again, a car that's new. So I would just cut my losses. I really, I wouldn't have any losses because if I trade this car in right now, or went to like CarMax to sell it, I would get a check back. So I got plenty of equity in it. I'm not worried about that. Um, so if that ever did happen, it's not like I would be losing out on anything or. You know, if I decided to just get rid of it or whatever, I wouldn't be upside down, not underwater on it. So, really not a big deal. But honestly, I haven't had any major issues or anything that would make me not want it. <clears throat> Again, the little stuff that has happened, yes, it's been very annoying. It's just been just like, why? Come on, Acker, get your shit together. But the car as a whole, I love it. Really, I do. But, do I love it enough to keep it for another year and a half? We'll just have to see. We'll just have to see, because if I were to get anything else, it would be on two totally different extremes. I would either go for some sort of hybrid for maximum fuel mileage, or I would go for something sportier and not give a shit about the fuel mileage. So it's kind of up in the air with your boy on, on that, but again, as of now, we're good to go. Damn. See, it's crazy the, the, the amount that these dampers really do change the ride. That bump is never that bad when it's in uh, comfort, but in sport, I really felt it. Ready to park. Because we got some more content coming today, guys. We're going to be doing a video called why smart people lease i'm gonna break down the whole idea of a lease and why it's not this horrible situation that i've had so many people you know just denounce the idea of of leasing and they have all of these things in their mind and none of them are facts none of them are actual things to be concerned about or things that even happen on a lease you know, so we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about um, the best way to get rid of your lease as well. So it'll be wrapped up into into two things, you know, two things wrapped into one video. So definitely make sure you like and subscribe. I hope you enjoyed the video and um, I'll be catching you guys in the next one, man. We got a lot more to do. We got a lot more content to create. So definitely looking forward to... Um, 
to bringing that to you guys. Thank you guys for sticking in there with me. For all you guys who followed or subscribed to my channel for the long form content and haven't been getting it, I do apologize. I'm sorry. I'm trying to branch out, trying to do some different things. We had gameplay. We got some um, some comedies, some some home stuff. You know, cooking things like that. So, just trying to give you guys more aspects of my my day to day. Be besides just being a car enthusiast, you know, there's other stuff that happens too. So, trying to bring you some of that too. But anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you like and subscribe. And you know, I'm gonna catch you in the next one. Peace out, homies.